Uh oh. Uh oh, this guy's not looking too good. This is like the. <laughs> can, we, can we get a? <laughs> this is like the uh, the thing that happens. This is not good. This is very bad. How did you? <laughs> how did you? How did this happen? How did you do this? How did you do this? No. Oh my god. Oh no. What? Oh, it's gone. Problem solved. Problem solved. Don't worry about it. That never happened. We should put like a little sign here. Just as a, uh, you know, welcome, welcome to the trailer park. Where was, um, we might just go, oh, maybe we'll use one of, or like, here. This is a pretty, pretty little sign, but trailer, it's, it's trailer park time. And you know what? They like corn. This will be their little roadside attraction. It's the only reason people come here. What I really want is to have some some people like right up against the highway here with a little rickety fence. These guys have got the uh, the worst of it. There's not a whole lot of people driving on this road, but when people do drive on that road, it's gonna wake them up. <laughs> They're not gonna have a good time. We're gonna put the RV dealership like right next to the entrance. Buy f this. This is all owned by the same company. They want you to buy an RV and then live in the RV park. We have to make some luxuries. This is an RV park. I think that an inflatable pool would have suited it quite well. But for now, let's... We can go ahead and put in, like... Does this look nice? Does this look too nice for them? I feel like... No, I think that's appropriate. There's not actually a pool. So, I think I want to give them a pool still, but we might need to find a better one. Let's go ahead and just put in the relaxation pool for now. So, let's put that there. We can get a little, a little, a little relaxation going on. These guys are, you know, they've got some money. They've probably got enough money to, like, afford a, a bit more of a spread out experience. This is the high end section. You've got separation. We'll even put in some trees in between these guys. This is like, you know... You, you, you've got a little bit of money. You just, you're living the trailer life. You're living the RV lifestyle. You're not here because you're a poor meth head or anything. Like the other people. And we'll get, don't worry, we'll get to them. They're going to the dealership. They're going to RV World Dealership. Yeah. Go buy, buy an RV. Live in the nice, it's super convenient. You don't even have to drive the RV anywhere. If that's not what an RV is for. People are straight up having a time out here. They want to hang out with the uh, the RV park. They want to go to park with pool. And we, you know what? Can we blame them for wanting to go with, to park with pool? No, of course not. Because look at this. Look at that. Look at... Uh, there's literally nobody in the pool. But uh, there's people at the park doing things. They're hanging out. Look at how much fun they're having. Look at how... Look at how much fun they're having. Come to the RV dealership and buy an RV. Look at how much fun they're having. Don't you want that to be you? Look at this. Look at this nice family here. You can barely, look at this. Look at they've got a little. That he he's a, he he kind of looked like a kid. He's got a cool hat, sort of thing. He's having a fun time. This is an ad for the RV World dealership. Buy an RV. Come live in the RV park. It's fun. Come on, you'll have a good time. You know who's not having a great time though? The residents. The people that like. Like, these guys, we have some residents that are, you know, they've got a little bit of cash that they're willing to spend. That's fine. The goal of this RV park is not making people... The, the ads may say we want people to have fun, but no, nobody cares. The uh, owner of RV World Dealership and Sutern Trailer Park are not in the business of, you know, improving people's lives, let's just say. Uh, they're in the business of selling as many... RV spots as they possibly can to you know anybody so let's just kind of we're this this is they're 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 not as separated up here and look we're gonna intentionally make sure that there's no sound barriers between them and the highway why because screw you that's why don't ask questions like that that's you can't you can't do that there are options for you if you don't have very much money but RV World Dealership Man doesn't like poor people, and that's not my fault. I don't make the rules. That's what he's doing right now. That's just, that's how he is. And look, is it good? No, of course not. It's not good. 
but that's the way it is and there's absolutely nothing that I can do about it. So don't ask me to do anything about it because it's it's not going to happen. Oh, you know what would be really fun? This is where <laughs> Well, he's gonna live in a mansion. Look, let's be honest. He he wants he doesn't want to be all that close to uh, the peasants that he's he's servicing. He just lives in a mansion, like right off to the side, right next to all these. <laughs> he just lives in this mansion over here, and nobody can say anything about it because he owns the literally everything in the town. Let's call him John. John Dutern Mansion. This guy literally owns this entire town. What exactly is the problem here? It just really does not want to reach the look. The p I think the people are uprising right now. I think that maybe is what's going on. They've cut off John Sutern's electricity and water supply. The people of this town do not like him. It's the trailer park. All of the people from the trailer park have gone and sabotaged the mansion's power and water supply. The people are speaking right now, and who are we to silence them? John Sutern will have to deal with that on his own. Let's put in more soldiers for the trailer park uprising. I'm sure some of these people are fantastic. They're, I'm sure, some of the best people in the world. They are leading a revolt against their dictatorial ruler that owns everything in this town. They're not doing too bad for themselves. Some of them are meth heads. I'm sorry. There's just nothing we can do about that. I'm sure John, if he wanted to, could fund rehabilitation programs. Look at his mansion. He's got the money. Look at all this land he owns. He's doing good. But he's not feeling too great right now because he has no water or power because the, the proletariat has, has revolted against him. This is turning into a communist revolution very quickly. As we're making this trailer park, we gotta think, what would John do? Hmm? What would John do with his, you know, he may not be doing a lot right now. The revolution has failed. This is not good. Everyone's rent just got raised like times 10. What would John do? He'd create another road right next to the highway. He'd use up all of his available land to make sure that everyone is having a, as miserable of an experience as they possibly could be. John has n just absolutely no qualms with gramming people together like sardines. Because you know what? He's making money. He's got a private military patr constantly patrolling the trailer park to make sure that there's no rebellious activity going on. The only thing the tourists see is park with pool. That's what they see. The private army that, that John Sultane has hired keeps them all silenced. They can't talk to the tourists. The people that live here, they can't talk to the tourists. The private army will come and kill you if you try to try to talk about what's going on here. The first thing they see is this. You come through the trees, you see this. This is the first thing you see. You see this, and then you see this giant mansion. And you wonder, what am I doing? Why am I here? And you try to leave. And the guards. You see the guards at the entrance of the trailer park, and you know that you are stuck. You can't do anything about it. You are under John's thumb, and you cannot stop him. These are pretty much the people that, you know, led this uprising. And John's like, okay, look. You're getting moved to the highway. I feel like it's fairly fair to say that this guy here was the leader of the uprising so he's going on the other side of the highway john owns that area little do you know that guy's over there now john's not pleased john doesn't uh doesn't really want him going anywhere so he's gonna make it just a little bit more difficult and just kind of put up a fence he's just gonna he's gonna let him out it's not kidnapping he's like only kind of a prisoner of war the war's ended the, the revolution was was quashed by John and his private military group, but he he doesn't want this guy going anywhere. Look, the guy can get out, but the RV's not going anywhere. He's not let he's not letting the RV go anywhere. I'm just gonna kind of put up a couple trees, and now you really can't see it from the highway all that much. I'm just gonna kind of do that, and then bam, pro problem solved. Look, John, you can kind of see it still. Let's just put one like here put two there yeah that should be good 
Um, and then one, like, maybe just, like, down here a little bit. And look, you're not seeing that. <laughs> you're not seeing that. John's a clever man. He plays the long game. He planted the trees. Make sure nobody could see his little POW over here. Oh, yeah, this is what John uses to patrol. John takes these nice, loud Ferrari cop cars. Lights and sirens on just blasts up and down this highway. And nobody does about anything about it because there's no po actual police presence up here. And that's how it will remain. They're going to take those with their, their sirens and lights on and just blast up and down this highway at, at 3 a.m. And <laughs> none of these people will ever get a good night's sleep because they revolted against John. And John's got to teach a lesson. So John's got some visitors to his mansion. He lets people come and see how wonderful this place is. And he drags people in. He says, hey, look at how awesome this is you don't you want to live out here away from the hustle and bustle of the big city he reels them in and he says look i tell you i'll tell you what down the street down the street over there there's a nice rv dealership that's what he says to them he says there's an rv dealership down the street i don't have any i look it's just a nice no association not sponsored he says so what John says to these tourists that visit his mansion, he says, there's an RV dealership down the street. You go down there. I know the owner. That's what he says. He says, I know the owner. I'll get you a discount on an RV. If you come and live in the John Sertain trailer park. That's what he says to them. That's how he gets them. That's how he gets the tourists. He says, look, I know you want to get away. He gives them a discount on the RV and he says... I'll give you a nice spot away from the highway. It'll be quiet. You're in the forest. It's only you. That's what he says. And then, and then he slaps him right here. And then he puts him right there. And he says, you're here now. You cannot leave. And then he holds out his hand. He holds out his hand and he says, first month's rent right now. <laughs> 